اعوذبلشیطانجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ربی شرح علی صدری و یسر علی عمری وحل العقتن من لسانی یف کہو کولی جو سکسٹین سورہ کہف و خضر سید ڈڈ آئی ناٹ ٹیل یو دیٹ یو ول ناٹ بی ایبل ٹو بیئر ود می سیونٹی سکس موسا ریپلائڈ اف ایور آئی آسک یو اباؤٹ اینی تھنگ آفٹر دس یو مے ناٹ کیپ می ان یور کمپنی فار دین آئی شوڈ ڈیزرو اٹ بیکاز یو ول ہیو این ایکسکیوز ان مائی کیس Now Musa alayhi salam again apologizes and says that one more time, one more chance and you will be justified in leaving me. 77, they traveled on until they came to a people of a town. They asked them for some food but they refused to receive them as their guests. There they found a wall on the point of falling down so he restored it. Musa said, if you wanted, you could have demanded some payment for it. 78. Khizr alayhi salam replied, that's it, this is parting between you and me. But first I will explain to you those acts of mine which you could not bear to watch with patience. 79. As for the boat, it belonged to some poor fishermen who toiled on the river. I intended to damage it because in their rear there was a king who was seizing every boat by force. 80. As for the youth, his parents were true believers and we feared lest he would grieve them with his rebellion and unbelief. 81. It was our wish that their Rabb should grant them another in his place, a son more righteous and better in affection. 82. As for the wall, it belonged to two orphan boys in the city and beneath it their treasure was buried. Since their father was a righteous man, your Rabb desired that these children should attain their maturity and take out their treasure all this was done as a mercy from your rab what i did was not done by my own will this is the interpretation of those actions which you could not bear to watch with patience 83 o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam they ask you about zulkarnain say i will recite to you some of his story 84 indeed we established him in power in the land and we gave him all kinds of ways and means 85 so one time he followed a certain expedition towards the west and he marched on 86 until he reached the end of the land and the start of an ocean where the sun was setting he noticed that it was a setting in a muddy spring and found by it a people we said o zulkarnain you have the option to either punish them or to show them kindness 87 he said anyone who will do wrong shall be punished then will he return to his rab and be sternly punished by him 88 as for him who believes and does good deeds he will have a good reward and will be assigned an easy task by our command 89 then he set out on another expedition towards the east and marched on 90 till he came to the rising of the sun he noted it rising on a people for whom we had not provided any shelter from it 91 he left them as they were we had full knowledge what priority was before him 92 then he set out on another expedition and marched on 93 till he reached between two mountains where he found a people who could hardly understand his language 94 they requested o zulkarnain people of gog and magog ravage this land should we pay you tribute in order for you to build a wall barrier between us and them 95 zulkarnain said that which my rab has granted me is more than enough just help me with worker force and i will erect a fortified barrier between you and them 96 bring me panels of iron finally when he had leveled off the space between the two mountains he said ply your bellows they did so until the iron wall became red hot Then he said bring me some molten brass to pour over it 97 this became such a barrier that Gog and Magog could not scale it or dig through it 98 he said this is a blessing from my rab but you should know that when the promise of my rab shall come to pass he will level it to the ground for the promise of my rab is ever true Now Zulkarnain has done something tremendous but he is teaching the people that knowledge comes from allah and when allah wills this will be rendered into a rubble and this is the vision of a moment 
on that day we shall let the people lose to surge like waves on one another the trumpet will be blown and we shall assemble the mankind all together hundred we shall spread hell out on display before the unbelievers 101 who had turned a blind eye to my admonition and a deaf ear to my warnings 102. Do the unbelievers think that they can take my servants as protectors to save themselves from hell instead of me? Certainly we have prepared hell for the entertainment of such unbelievers. 103. O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa tell them, should we tell you the worst kind of losers relating to their deeds? 104. Those whose all efforts on the worldly life had gone astray from the right way but all along they were under the delusion that they were doing good deeds now this is the definition of success and loss in allah's eyes now the person discussed in these verses he is not someone who does not own a grand house or a grand car or a huge business or a prestigious post a wrangler degree or a brilliant you know mansion although there is nothing wrong with all these things according to the definition of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the loser is the one whose all efforts are for dunya alone 105 they are the ones who are disregarding the revelations of their rab and the fact that they will meet him for accounting of their deeds in the hereafter so the deeds will become null and will not carry any weight on the day of judgment what are the signs that these losers ignore these signs are as we are told in the verse the quran the signs in nature and the signs in our own body all these serve as sign boards on the path of allah and lead towards him those who ignore these signs are lost 106 thus the reward of such people will be hell because they had no faith and because they took my revelations and my rasuls as a joke this means that when you do not take your faith, your religion seriously, this is how you end up. Verse 107, however, those who believe and do good deeds, they will be entertained with the gardens of paradise. 108, to live therein forever and they will never desire to go anywhere else. 109 o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam tell them if the ocean were ink with which to write the words of my rab the ocean would surely be consumed before the words of my rab are finished even if we brought similar quantity of ink to replenish it 110 o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam tell them i am but a human being like you the revelation is sent to me to declare that your god is one god therefore whoever hopes to meet his rab let him do good deeds and join no other deity in the worship of his rab with this surah al kahf we are done with it now, although there are many lessons in Surah Al-Kahf, some of the few are, number one, that the courage which these young men showed in order to break away from a materialistic and a non-believing society, and they did hijrah for the sake of Allah. Then we are taught about the company of the righteous people. Being in each other's company made them strong, then by the story of the man who owned the garden, Allah teaches us that all that is in this world can vanish like a bubble. So only the foolish people pride themselves over it. Then we come to know from the story of Musa salam, that the master of destiny is only Allah and only he knows its reality. But we must understand that everything that happens is for a reason. And then finally, from the story of Zulkarnain, we come to know that Islam does not forbid science 
or technology but just do not forget that knowledge comes from allah and finally that when you give allah your best allah values you many fold like allah honored the people of the cave so much that their mention is preserved in the quran till the end of time surah maryam verse 1 kaf ha ya ain swad verse 2 this is a reminder of blessings that your rab bestowed on his servant zakaria verse 3 when he invoked his rab in secret zakaria alayhi salam was the uncle and custodian of maryam alayhi salam and he used to visit her in the sanctuary and one day he saw fruits which were out of season lying before maryam alayhi salam and when he asked her that from where did she get these out of season fruits and she casually replied that my rab sent them for me and she said that this was nothing amazing because our rab can do anything he wants now this moved zakaria alayhi salam so much that he thought that the rab who is sending out of season fruits for maryam is definitely capable of granting me a child as well though the obvious means are not there and he made this secret dua to allah verse 4 saying oh my oh rab surely my bones have weakened and the hair of my head glisten with gray while i have never been disappointed in my prayer to you o rab so he admits his own inadequacy and counts the favors of allah verse 5 yet i fear about my relatives after me for my wife is barren grant me an heir by your grace verse 6 who should inherit me and inherit the posterity of yaqub alayhi salam and make him o my rab a desirable person so he wants a child who would carry his mission of prophethood verse 7 we answered his prayer saying o zakaria surely we give you the good news of a son his name shall be yahya a name that no one has had before him eight he asked orab how shall i i have a son when my wife is barren and i have become impotent from old age verse 9 the answer came so shall it be your rab says it shall not be a difficult task for me just as i created you before when you were nothing at all allah says that this is something very easy for allah to do he just has to say kun and it shall be what's so strange about it just as i created you out of nothingness i will create this child for you verse then zakaria alayhi salam said oh my rab give me a sign he said your sign is that for three nights you shall not be able to speak to the people even being sound in health verse 11 after this zakaria alayhi salam came out of the shrine and asked his people through sign language to glorify allah in the morning and in the evening verse 12 to yahya when he became old enough we said hold firmly to the book we granted him wisdom while he was yet a boy verse 13 and also granted him kindness and purity by our grace and he grew up a pious man verse 14 dutiful to his parents he was neither arrogant nor disobedient verse 15 peace be upon him the day he was born the day of his death and the day he will be raised to life again subhanallah look at the way allah subhana taala honors yahya alay salam verse 16 o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam relate to them the story of maryam in the book when she withdrew from her family to a place in the east now as we know that the mother of maryam alay salam had made a vow to allah that the child i'm going to have i will dedicate this child to allah and the time when she made this vow maryam alay salam was not born yet so to fulfill her vow when maryam alayhi salam was old enough to worship allah properly she brought her to baitul maqdis and this place was called hekel and only men used to worship here there was no place for women but when maryam alayhi salam came a special place in the east wing of the hekel was given to maryam alayhi salam where she could worship allah in peace verse 17 she chose to be secluded from them we sent to her our angel and he appeared before her as a grown up man 18 she said i seek rahman's protection against you leave me alone if you are god fearing 19 he said don't be afraid i'm merely a messenger from your rab to tell you about the gift of a holy son 20 she said how shall i bear a son no man has ever touched me nor am i unchaste 21 the angel replied so shall it be your rab says it is easy for me we wish to make him a sign for mankind and a blessing from us and this matter has already been decreed
verse 22 so she conceived the child and she retired with him to a remote place 23 the pains of childbirth drove her to the trunk of a palm tree she cried in anguish ah would that i had died before this and long forgotten so uh, this shows that she is feeling very low and depressed at this 24 an angel from beneath the palm tree consoled her saying do not grieve your rub has provided a brook at your feet 25 if you shake the trunk of this date palm tree it will drop fresh ripe dates in your lap 26 so eat drink and refresh yourself if you see anyone tell him i have vowed a fast to rahman so i will not speak to anyone today 27 carrying the baby she came back to her people they said oh mariam you have brought something hard to believe 28 oh sister of harun your father was not a bad man nor your mother an unchaste woman verse 29 in response she merely pointed towards the baby they said how can we talk to the baby in the cradle 30 whereupon the baby spoke out i am indeed a servant of allah he has given me the book and made me a prophet so here we see that allah intervenes for maryam salam and makes the baby speak 31 his blessings is with me everywhere i go he has commanded me to establish salah and give zakah as long as i shall live his blessing is with me means that whatever goodness there is that exists i will have it in abundance wherever i go verse 32 he has exhorted me to honor my mother and has not made me domineering hard to deal 33 peace be upon me the day i was born the day i shall die and the day i shall be raised to life again verse 34 such was isa the son of mariam and this is the true statement about him concerning while they are in doubt the verse says that this is what isa salam actually is this is how he was born how he lived and how he will die and the concept which prevail about him other than this are all misconceptions 35 it is not befitting to the majesty of allah that he himself should beget a son he is far above this for when he decrees a matter he need only say be and it is here both the groups are addressed the one who say that Nauzubillah Isa alayhi salam was illegitimate and secondly who say that Nauzubillah he is the son of allah 36 Isa alayhi salam declared verily Allah is my rub and your rub therefore serve him this is a right way 37 in spite of this the sects from among them are divided concerning Jesus so woe to the disbelievers who shall be punished after witnessing the truth on the great day of judgment now uh, this refers to the two groups mentioned in verse 34 and the various sects and groups within Christianity are also being addressed. Verse 38, they will be able to see and hear very clearly on that day when they will appear before us. But today these wrongdoers neither want to hear nor see the truth and are in manifest error. 39 O Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam forewarn them about the day of intense regret when this matter will be decided even though at present they are paying no heed and do not believe 40 ultimately all things will perish and it is we who will inherit the earth and all that is on it and to us shall they return 41 relate to them the story of ibrahim from the book he was a truthful prophet 42 remember when he said to his father oh my father why do you worship something that can neither hear nor see nor yet profit you in any way 43 oh my father i have been given some knowledge which has not come to you so follow me i'll guide you to the right way Verse 44, O my father, do not worship shaitan, for shaitan is disobedient to the compassionate Allah. 45, O my father, I fear that a punishment of the beneficent may afflict you and you may become a friend of shaitan. 46, his father replied, How dare you renounce my God, O Ibrahim? If you do not stop this folly, I will indeed stone you to death. So be gone from my house. 47 ibrahim said peace be upon you i will pray to my rub for your forgiveness surely he is ever kind to me 48 
I am leaving you and those whom you invoke besides Allah. I will call upon my Rabb and I am sure my prayers to my Rabb will not be ignored. Verse 49, so when he left them and the deities whom they worshipped besides Allah, we granted him descendants like Ishaq and Yaqub and we made each of them a prophet. So here we see that he left everything for Allah and Allah valued him so much that he granted him Ishaq salam and Yaqub salam. Allah did not leave him alone. He left his family and Allah gave him family in the form of Ishaq alayhi salam. The important lesson for us is that if we have to leave on anything for the sake of Allah, Allah will always make up for that deficiency. He had left one father and as a recompense, Allah gave him two dear relations, son and a grandson and both of them prophets of Allah. Subhanallah, this is the way Allah rewards those who make sacrifices for his sake. Verse 50, we bestowed on them our mercy and we granted them honor of being mentioned with true high respect. Verse 51, relate to them the story of Musa. In the book, surely he was a chosen man and was a Rasul, a prophet. 52, we called him from the right side of Mount Tur and honored him to come closer for exclusive conversation. Verse 53, we made his brother Harun a prophet with our blessings and assigned him as his assistant. 54 also relate to them the story of Ismail. In the book, he was a man of his word and was a Rasul, a prophet. 55. He commanded his people to establish Salat and give Zakah and was the one whom his Rabb was well pleased. 56. Also relate to them the story of Idris alayhi salam. In the book, he was a truthful man, a prophet. Idris alayhi salam lived 1000 years before Nuh alayhi salam and was amongst his ancestors. He was the first prophet after Adam alayhi salam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed upon him 30 books. He was the first man who was given the knowledge of astrology and mathematics through a miracle. He was the first man who learned how to write with a pen and he was also the first who invented the stitching of cloth. People used to wear animal skins instead of cloth before his time. He also invented measurement tools for the first time and making of weapons also started in his time and he used them in his holy wars against the descendants of Kabil. 57. Whom we raised to a lofty place. 58. These are some of the prophets on whom Allah bestowed his favors from amongst the descendants of Adam and of those whom we carried in the ark with Nuh and of the descendants of Ibrahim and Israel and of those whom we guided and chose whenever the revelations of the compassionate were recited to them, they fell down to prostrate and weep. 59. But generations who succeeded them abandoned the Salah and started following their lusts. So they will soon face the consequences of their deviation. Now the verse shows that the first step towards a person's downfall is that he abandons Salah. And secondly, the fa falling in the lusts and desires of dunya. Verse 60, however, those who repent, become believers and do good deeds will be admitted to paradise and will not be wronged in the least. Allah says, but those who repent, repent from what? Repent from wasting their salat either by not reading it or reading it in an improper way. The verse then says that they become believers. This shows that if you are not bothered about your Salat, then you are not a true believer. Your action is denying that you are a believer. 61. They will be granted the gardens of Eden, which the merciful has promised to his servants, even though they have not seen them, and his promise shall be fulfilled. 62. There they will hear no nonsense, but only the words of peace, and they will be provided their sustenance day and night. Such is the paradise which we shall give as an inheritance to those of our servants who lead a pious life. 64. The angels, Jibril, who 
brought this revelation after a long interval said we do not descend from heaven except by the command of your rab to him belongs whatever is before us and whatever is behind us and all that lies in between your rab is never forgetful the background of the verse is that once wahi did not come on prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam for a long time According to some narrations this limit was 60 days and this was a time when prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was confronted with intense opposition in the way of his dawa and he was quite upset about it because the source which consoled him and strengthened him and encouraged him was not there so when jibril alaihi salam came with the wahi he sort of complained that why did you not not come for such a long period of time like you complain to someone out of love and jibril alaihi salam explained that i have no power to come on my own to you it was your rabb's decision that wahi should be delayed so i had to obey 65 he is the rabb of the heavens and the earth and of all that lies in between so worship him be steadfast in his worship do you know any other being with the qualities like him 66 man says what once i am dead shall i be raised to life again 67 does not the man remember that we created him before out of nothing 68 by your rab we will call them to account in the company of all their shaitans and set them on their knees around the fire of hell 69 then from every sect we will certainly drag out its stoutest rebels against the compassionate 70 certainly we know best who deserves most to be burned therein 71 there is not a single one of you who shall not pass over it this absolute decree of your rub is unavoidable 72 then we will deliver those who were pious during their life on the earth and leave the wrong doers therein humbled on their knees 73 when our clear revelations are recited to them the unbelievers say to the believers which one of the two of us have fine dwellings and better companions 74 how many generations have we destroyed before them who were far greater in riches and splendor 75 tell them anyone who has gone astray the compassionate prolongs his respite and extends an opportunity until they see about which they were warned be it a worldly scourge or the hour of doom then they will realize whose is the worst dwelling and whose are the weak companions the worst means that people who are away from allah yet rolling in wealth and comforts the reality of such people is that allah lets them go astray in the path they, they have chosen and because of that they keep on having a good time remember allah has not withdrawn punishment from such people he has simply delayed it this time may be late but will come definitely for some this punishment starts in dunya and for some it starts in the akhirah 76 in fact allah increases in guidance those who seek guidance everlasting are only the good deeds which are the best in the sight of your rab to earn you a better reward and yield you the best fruit now the following four verses that are coming that is verse 77 78 79 and 80 they are in the light of a specific historical background we will go through the background first because then the verses become easy to understand it is narrated in bukhari and muslim both that hazrat khabbab bin arath lent some money to a non believer who was a qureshi chief his name was as bin wail when hazrat khabbab pressed him to return his loan back As bin Wail said that he would not make the payment until Hazrat Khabbab disassociates himself from Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Hazrat Khabbab replied that he would never do that not until as was dead and rose to life again. At this As ibn Wail said, "What will I be brought back to life again after I'm dead? 
If so, I will repay the loan only after I am brought back to life again, because even then I will have my wealth and my children. Now the verses answer us been wiles. boastful claims verse 77 have you noticed the word of that person who rejects our revelations yet boasts i shall always be given wealth and children 78 has he gained the knowledge of the unseen or has he been awarded a contract by the compassionate 79 by no means we write down what he says and we will make his punishment long and terrible 80 we will inherit all that he boasts of and he will come back to us all alone leaving all these things behind verse 81 they have taken other deities for worship besides allah so that they should be a source of strength to them 82 by no means those very deities will renounce their worship and turn against them on the day of judgment 83 don't you see that we have sent down to the unbelievers shaitans who incite them against the truth 84 therefore be not in haste against them their days are numbered 85 the day will surely come when we will gather the righteous like honored guests before the compassionate 86 and drive the criminals to hell like thirsty cattle are driven to water 87 none shall have the power to intercede except the one who may receive the sanction of the compassionate 88 those who say the compassionate has begotten a son 89 certainly preach such a monstrous falsehood 90 that the very heavens might crack and the earth might cleave asunder and the mountains might crumble to pieces this means that this concept of trinity and the concept that isa alay salam is the son of allah this is an insult to allah subhanahu wa taala and it angers him so much that due to his wrath the earth and the sky can crack and the mountains can crumble to dust 91 at their ascribing a son to the compassionate 92 it is not befitting to the compassionate that he should beget a son 93 There is none in the heavens and in the earth but must come to the compassionate in full submission 94 he has a comprehensive knowledge and has kept strict count of all his creatures 95 and every one of them will come to him individually on the day of resurrection 96 surely the beneficent will bring about love for those who believe and do good deeds this means that those who are steadfast in their faith and obedience to allah then allah subhanahu wa taala as a result creates an environment of friendship and love between them 97 we have made this quran easy in your own language so that you may give good news to the righteous and warn the headstrong contentious folk verse 98 how many generations have we destroyed before them can you see any of them or hear even a sound of them the verse means that there were many people before you who stood up against allah but when the wrath of allah caught up upon them for their sinful acts they were wiped off from the face of this earth in such a way that not even a whisper or a feeble motion was heard from them wa akhiru tawana anil hamdulillahi rabbil alamin